Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Aisha Sadiqi, and we are going to continue with the third poetry that is The Listeners by Walder de la Mer. Okay, this is the name of the poet, Walder de la Mer. It's a different language name. That means it is not an Indian name and it's not even an American name. We will also see about him. Okay, uh, now in the last lecture, I just did a little half part of the poetry, but we did not start with the poet. Okay, so we will just finish off with the poet part first and then continue with the poetry that we have left before. All right, so let's, I'll just share my screen for you. Okay, now let's go here. We'll just see a little bit about the poet first, Walter Dallemere published the listeners so this poetry that he has published he has published it in 1912 you need to remember the date it can be asked as a title poem of his second collection of poetry so that means he was a poet from la like a long time right it remains one or he remains one of his most poet Piece, uh, most famous pieces of writing and reflects the author's fascination with mystery and supernatural. Okay, now the poet uh, tells the story of an unnamed traveler. So in this poem, we saw that the traveler, he is not named, he, we do not know from where he is coming, but he, has, he is approaching an abandoned house. That means a house that nobody lives in. Seemingly inhabited, by ghosts that means it is a house of ghosts nobody no human being stays there okay but leaves the readers many questions as to who these entities actually are unanswered so it's a question mark for us or it is uh, unknown to us it is a uh, the readers who we are going to read so we are the readers we are going to read the poetry and we it is going to leave us in awe or in question that who are these people who unanswered the traveler okay so this is now it's a little more we are referring to this book and there's a little more introduction on the poet here from where I'm reading so if you see her by using very few words he can create wider and broader meanings Okay, so this poet, he uses very simple language and not a very difficult language of the poetry, but very simple language, he can make the public understand what does he mean by the poetry. There are a few poets who use a very difficult language so that the commoners do not, are not able to read it. But this poet, he actually uses very simple words and also with small little words, he creates big ideas. He usually picks up very common, ordinary thing of life, very common life he picks up. And then he transforms it into magical um, experiences. Okay, then he paints a very ordinary, in a very odd color so that the readers are very connected to it. That means it's real. It does not look very... Yeah, uh, it does not look that is very unreal or fascinating. Now he has a sense of supernatural that portrays his skillful. Now he mostly in his poetry where he brings a natural thing, he with along with it he brings a very supernatural power. So you must have seen watched movies where you have supernatural powers, Hollywood, Bollywood, right? Many so Spider Man and Hitman, uh, sorry. Uh, Batman and all right they have supernatural powers so even this poet he brings out very supernatural powers and portrays it in a very skillful way this poem of his the listener deals with half heart whispers and the total atmosphere in the poem is full on the moonlight and mystery the whole poetry is in the dark that is at night where there's a moonlight that is lit on one house that is uh, alone in the forest. The poem creates a charm through the atmosphere of silence and sh shadow night. That means a very silent night, a scary night, you can say dark and scary night with one moonlight on top of the house. So this is the starting of the poetry. And if I just want you all to see that we have done a couple of things. We have done the poetry sonnet 29. The world is too much with us. We are on the third poetry, the listeners. Okay. And we just did about who was 
the poet and what did he do and how was his work and how was he related to all poetry form and all. Now we'll be coming towards what is the poetry? Okay, now if there's one more lecture that I've already done, we have done the first few verses of the poetry. Now we'll be going from the ninth one. Okay, but still I just want to have a revision. So I'll be starting from the first one. Is there anybody there, said the traveler, knocking on the moonlit door. And his horse in the silence champed the grasses of the forest's ferny flow. And a bird flew out of the turret above the traveler's head. And he smoothed upon the door again a second time. Is there anybody there? He said again. But no one descended to the traveler. No head from the leaf fringed still leaned over and looked into his gray eyes. So we have almost done till here. What does this mean? That means a traveler who was unnamed once he knocked at the door of a house that had a tower on top of it and the house was alone into a forest. So uh, when the traveler came on a horse, he left his horse behind to graze and the, the horse was grazing in an open forest and eating all the ferns. That means the small little plants that do not have flowers till now. So he ate up all the grass and this traveler knocks on the door and there's no answer and there's no reply from inside. So he knocks it again very forcefully to get an answer. But still there is no answer. There's silence even the second time when once he asked and there's no one who not like opening the door is a big thing, but nobody even peeps out of from the window to see who it is, right? And the window, if you see, they have described the window as it is leaf fringe. That means the full window is covered with leaves of the trees and all, the branches going up to the window. Now this shows us already an idea that the house may be empty and no humans are living in it. Why? Because if humans live in it, what we do is, right, we always cut down the trees or branches that are coming into our house or in the window. We do not have a habit. We do not let the whole entire tree to come into our house, right? So we cut it off before it enters the house. But here, if you see, it is described, the window is described that it is fully covered with leaves, okay? So it means that we, the traveler has already got an idea why that there's nobody answering. Is there nobody inside? And the, even if the window is covered with all leaves, that means, yeah, it's a sign that nobody's inside, right? But no one descended. So we've done till here. Let's move ahead here. Now, where he stood, perplexed and still. What do you mean by perplexed? The word perplexed means surprised. Okay, so if you're referring to this uh, book and you're seeing the listeners, so you'll know on page number 3.27, there is a glossary of words where it is said that perplexed means surprised. Okay, now here the traveler is very surprised and he stands in his place puzzled by why these people are not answering from inside, why there's no answer, a lack of answer, right? So till now we are here. Now, but only, but only a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet of the moonlight to that voice from the world of men. That means now here they have revealed phantom listeners. So the whole poetry is named by the listeners. Who are these listeners? Phantom means the ghostly beings, okay? These, this house is filled with ghostly beings that is supernatural powers. As I said, the poet mostly refers to a natural life and also he adds up some supernatural things to make his poetry more exciting. So here he's added up ghosts, that is horror movie things, okay? So the house he's saying is of phantom listeners. It's filled with ghostly beings. The listener stands in the moonlight. That means the ghosts are all come into one place and standing in the moonlight. Okay, now... Okay, now here if you see... They all have come into one place and they're 
trying to listen to the human voice coming from outside so but they're not replying okay that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet that means the listeners are standing quietly in the moonlight listening to the person the traveler to that voice from the world of men that means this voice that is coming is not from their world that is the world of ghosts no it's coming from the world of men so the traveler is a human being and he's shouting out or he's calling out and these people are listening to the traveler quietly okay now let's see this one stood thronging the faint moonbeams on the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall hearkening in an air stirred and shaken by the lonely traveler's call the ghostly beams crowd around the staircase onto which the moonlight streaks as the quiet atmosphere in the empty house is disturbed by the sound of the traveler's lonely voice that means before this the house was filled with all ghosts and they were all quiet and they were not getting disturbed they were all living their own life without disturbing anyone without scaring anyone without anything right but they are now disturbed by the knock of this traveler right as a quiet atmosphere there was a very quiet and calm atmosphere in that empty house and it was not disturbed by anyone but now it has got disturbed by the sound of this traveler's lonely voice now the traveler has nobody there right and there's all forest around so he has very lonely voice right so they are all disturbed by it and he felt in his heart their strangeness this the stillness okay now here you see thronging what do you mean by thronging stood thronging the faint moon beams on the dark stair they stood crowding so the, so the house has a staircase and all these ghosts are crowded thronging that means they're crowded near the stairs where the moonlight is falling on them okay and hearkening in an air what do you mean by hearkening listening so they're all quietly listening to uh, the human voices that is coming from outside okay the lonely voice that is coming from outside then he felt in his heart their strangeness their stillness answering his cry outside the traveler senses a very strange presence in the silence that meets his questions now sometimes it happens right when we are alone in our house right and there's nobody around or we are stuck somewhere it happens that we feel sometimes you know we can understand or our inner or an unconscious mind answers us by saying that there is somebody around or there i can feel that there is there's someone around if you enter a house and uh, if your your sibling is trying to scare you and he's hidden somewhere around you can sometimes feel right there's someone or something creepy that's happening right so even this traveler he had a sense or he just felt this this something strange there's something there's someone present inside who can listen to my question but i don't know why they're not answering so while his horse moved okay while his horse moved cropping the dark stuff turf okay neat the stairs and leafy sky his horse undisturbed continues to graze in the dark forest the sky above has full stars and obscured by trees okay now if you see her neat the word neat means beneath now his horse is he his horse does not care he cannot listen he cannot feel the presence of any other ghost or something so he's nicely moving around in the forest without getting disturbed at all then cropping the dark turf what do you mean by cropping the dark turf that means he's eating up all the grass as he as usual he was eating neat the star stare and leafy sky neat means beneath the sky beneath a very open wide sky full of stars and around all trees leafy sky the sky is not leafy but you know the whole forest is leafy and dense so uh, there now for he suddenly smote on the door even louder and lifted his head 
tell them I came and no one answered that I kept my word, he said. What does the traveler do now? He's irritated. Now, once you've not knocked the second time, you forcefully knock, still no answer. The third time, you're angry now, right? So even he angrily smashes on the door, suddenly knocks very forcefully on the door, and he loudly says that, lifting up his head, looking up at the you know whole tower and the house, he loudly he tells that, tell them that I've come and nobody has answered me that I kept my word. What does this mean here now? The traveler suddenly beats on the door once again, even very, very loudly, and he calls out answering whoever is listening. Now the traveler does not know here that who is listening. So he's just telling to the listeners whoever is inside, and he's saying that whoever is listening to pass on the message. You, the people who are listening inside, you have to pass the message that no one has answered me when I came to the house, but I have kept my promise. Now, what promise? Let's see. Maybe someone has told him to go to that house and tell something. So he's come so long, right? So here we'll come to know. I, they heard his foot upon the stirrup. Okay. Now here, if you see in the first one, though every word he spake, spake means to speak. Now, never the least stare made the listener. Okay, okay, okay. I just missed out. Often he, once the traveler very suddenly knocks on the door, still what happens? Never the least stir made the listeners. That means the listeners don't even make a motion in the response to this. Even though he's so forcefully and so angrily knocking on the door, still the listeners inside, I don't care. This is the ghost are like, I don't care what he does and they have there's no motion there's no movement there's nothing no response from there the traveler's words reverberate through the dark that means it's just that he's talking to the door outside empty house he's talking to coming from only living person around there's only one living person voice that is heard in that whole forest and house right Felling, echoing through the shadowiness of the still house. That means he's just talking to that shadow of the house and his voice is echoing. That means there's no human being around that is talking and there's moving from one man left to wake. That means only that single traveler was a human being and all were dead around. That means all were ghosts around. So it's only his voice that is echoing around. Speak, that means to speak. Okay. Now, we've come to the last part here. I, they heard his foot upon the stirrup. And the sound of the iron on stone and how the silence surged softly backward when the plunging hoofs were gone. What does this mean? I, they heard his foot upon the stirrup. Stirrup means metal rings hanging on both sides of the horse where the rider puts his leg. Now, what is a stirrup? You, when, if you have done, a, if you've gone for horse riding classes, or maybe you've ever rode a horse. So you, the horse has a saddle on top of it, right? And the saddle has two metal things that are hanging down on which you, when you have to climb a horse, you keep your leg on that metal thing. It's like a horse. It's in a U shape. You put your leg into it and you put your whole body weight and then climb up on a horse and then the other side of the leg is also put on it. Okay, that's known as a stirrup. And the second of iron on stone, the phantom listeners hear him jump up on his horse. Now, once you put your leg in the stirrup and you jump nicely up, so the voice is heard by the listener inside. And they got to know that this list, the traveler has given up on knocking and asking for answer. And finally, he's returning and he's climbing up on his horse. And then the sound of the horseshoe on the stone. Now, horseshoe... Uh, the horse is always having a horseshoe, you all know, right? So the horse that, uh, why this horseshoe is worn by the horse? Because the horse is not injured. The leg of the horse should not be injured by a stone or any rocks that is down or pointy ones that can hurt his leg and no more he can run. So that's why horses are mostly, uh, the, the they are like, they put a horseshoe around the leg of the horse and it has a metallic, 
you know the horse shoe is made of metal so once the horse uh, puts his leg on any stone or rock the metal hits the rock and therefore a sound is made so they can the listeners can hear that sound that is the hit of the horse shoe on the stone uh, on the path of the traveler that means the horse is now on a movement and the traveler is about to go and ride away that means he's gone now and how the silence surge softly backward the silence of the forest quietly returns as the sound of the horses forcefully riding fades away that means finally the traveler and the horse is gone and again the forest and the horse is silent again without any sound of the horse when the plunging hoofs were gone okay then finally the hoofs that mean the horse's sound and his you know his running very fast swift sound of the horse is finally gone so what happens finally over here in the poetry what happens right all together we know that the traveler has come to a house knocking knocking but nobody answers why who are the listeners inside the listeners are the ghosts inside and nobody is answering him so finally we come to know that the traveler was sent by someone to talk into the house but in the house there are all dead people and there is in fact not only in the house around in the forest and in that area there is no one living and only that one man that is a traveler was the one living and knocking on the door and his horse and finally he gives up because there's nobody answering and he goes away right so the whole poetry is into a very dark night where a moonlight is there and the forest is there very quiet very quiet shadowy that means so you know shadow and very silent even the movements of the trees and the leaves are being sounded so all of this shows the full full scene of that you know you can imagine it a very horror type story where the travelers going but these ghosts have not done any bad thing to the human being. right so with this i have done with the whole summary if you see in this book on page number 3.27 you will also find a summary that is on the top and then even the glossary okay so with this we are done with the poetry and in the coming lectures then we will also go about to see all the question answers of the poetry but before the question answers i will in the next class i will see the themes what are the themes mystery understanding and unknown so we have a mystery in the poetry right so you see this theme of mystery then isolation and loneliness this is the other theme that we'll be seeing and we'll be seeing line by line explanation of the poetry that is the whole analysis of the poetry in fact even you have an answer analyze the whole poetry right so you can understand with this analysis here all right so the whole analysis is done but because we have already done it in the chapter so the whole analysis does not is is not required so we'll do the themes then we'll be doing the symbols who are the people the travelers the listener these are the people right who are the then what language is spoken in the poetry that is figures of speech that are included in the poetry so all of these things we are going to do okay uh, and then vocabulary i have already told you all still we'll go through it we'll see the rhyme scheme we'll see the setting of the story and then we'll end up with it then we'll see few question answers as well i hope whatever we have done in these two lectures wherein i have explained you the whole poetry and its meaning that is the summary with the help of the glossary in the book as well as i have spoken about each and every meaning to it okay so i hope you understand the poetry in the next class we'll be seeing all the themes and all thank you so much students let me just um, yeah stop sharing so we have done with this poetry and you can go on revising it and you can also you know uh, understand each and every word and whenever you're doing a poetry you can understand the whole concept and the scene you can just imagine right and uh, once you understand the glossary the words the poetry is very easy it's not a tough poetry no difficult words are used in the poetry as the poet walter de la mer is a poet who does not use difficult words he uses very very easy words to understand but he uses a supernatural power in his story so the supernatural power in his poetry that is the listeners is the ghost beings that is the listeners in the house 
okay so i hope the whole theme already is understood in the coming class yes we'll be doing ahead so you can stay tuned with me i'm miss aisha siddiqui and i am here for your fyba optional english subject okay uh, thank you very much students take care stay home stay safe